vehicle to grid is coming and it's going to be huge with some math yeah extreme scaling starts at home and if you don't think vehicle to grid's going to change everything well maybe you're right maybe you're wrong i'm brian welcome to my tesla weekend So Elon is going to be announcing Master Plan Part 2 pretty soon, March 1st, we believe. All we know is it's extreme scale. And there's a lot of speculation about what that means. Probably that. But what, did I, what I think it means, and some people say, well, it's going to be cars. It's going to be a lot more cars. And I disagree. I mean, that's part of it, sure, but that's not extreme. We're already at 2 million-ish on the run rate. We get to 10 million-ish, they're the biggest car company ever. Get to 20 million, you kind of start running out of market. I don't see a 5 to 10x being extreme. No, I think it's going to be, in part, Megapack factories. The Megapack factory does things a little differently. What it means is there's going to be a little bit of opportunity to disrupt the fossil fuel industry. This assembly line can crank these out every 68 minutes. They're not up to that speed yet. Uh, they're already up to 12 a day though. 12 a day, ramping to 20, 21, maybe 22 a day. And like all things Tesla, I believe that number is still sandbagged. And I think there's a lot of room to grow. But the best mega pack is no mega pack, because why do that when you can have power walls everywhere? And the best power wall is no power wall, because why do that when you can put cars everywhere? Cars everywhere, leave them plugged in, aways we goes. So let's look at the stats on the Mega Pack. They're pretty big, pretty heavy, 84,000 pounds. It's a bulky boy. They're the equivalent of 3,854 kilowatt hours of capacity. So that's great. They're quite expensive, two and a half million dollars. Pretty spendy. So let's get over. Let's look at some math. Mega pack. The cost per kilo, uh, kilowatt hours per pack, 3,800. The cost, two and a half million. Gives you a cost per kilowatt of 623. Now, if you compare that to a car, the vehicle's at 50 uh, kilowatt hours. Now it's no, it's more. It's 75. Yeah, you're never going to give them the full. You're not going to give them 100 to zero. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's not good for your battery. And it's not practical. 50,000. Yeah, you could pay more. You could pay less. We're using round figures. Cost per kilowatt, 1,000 bucks. Not too bad, considering you get to drive this mega pack. So what it actually means here is, and you get, well, the Cybertruck's going to be bigger. We could go to 70 kilowatts, kilowatt hours. Yeah, and then, but then you're at 70,000. You're still at 1,000 bucks a kilowatt hour. And there is a maintenance cost on this that doesn't appear when you're doing uh, when you're doing it as a car. So, how many cars would it take to equal a mega pack if you're only giving them 10 kilowatt hours? Just because you can set it if you join a virtual power plant. How many cars would it take if you gave them 10 kilowatts or 20 or 50? So we'll get back to that. But let's talk about what a Virtual power plant is. In the pre-show chat, uh, MD Hofstie was saying, I don't think that Tesla can do it. I don't think Tesla can do vehicle to grid um, because you need solar panels. And that's not always true. There are a lot of ones like the virtual power plant in Texas where you don't need to have a solar array in order to participate because you can take the power from them when they have surplus, when it's, when it's affordable, and sell it back when the price is higher. So you can, the program's already running. The pilot program allows for up to 80 megawatts of capacity from assets in homes and businesses to run as part of the grid. Google Nest, GM, and others form a partnership to advance virtual power plants. And here we can see that anyone uh, can, can do it. Uh, the Google Nest is great because it can say, uh-oh, there's a surge in demand. Turn off the AC for the next 10 minutes. You wouldn't even probably notice, and you protect the grid. Uh, all of these are helpful. And if you get a little bonus for shutting the power off for a few minutes, even if that bonus is not paying surge pricing, it's kind of worth it. And this 
easily stabilizes the grid. It's helpful. It does a good job. So when, it, when we're talking about Tesla's virtual power plant, even here it says you just have to have a power wall. Who can get it? Customers in Texas, you just have to have a power wall. And it has to be located somewhere with retail electricity choice. So that means you have to be able to be in the grid that allows you to sell to this particular provider. And you have to have a power wall. That's it. The car is the power wall. It can be anyway. Uh, if you're not at home, obviously you can't do it. But you can otherwise. So let's jump back over to the numbers. How many cars at 10 kilowatt hours would it take to replace a mega pack? 388. And half of that, and then, you know. 78 cars. If 78 cars are willing to give up 50 kilowatt hours, they replace an entire mega pack. As a reminder, we're already at a 2 million ish run rate. We're going to be there basically right now. So how many mega packs would that even be? Two million cars, even at 10 kilowatt hours, would be 5,000 mega packs. Double it, obviously. And yeah, now obviously two million cars, 25,000 mega packs. That's not a real number. That's not realistic. Not, nobody's probably doing 50 kilowatt hours. But if the money's there, you could. If there's a 10% opt-in rate, because not everyone's going to do this. Not everyone lives in a place where it's even possible. Some people live in <laughs> some people live in Florida, which is very hostile to new entrants into the uh, power market. So at 10%, you guys know how to do that, that math. It's pretty straightforward. But how many peaker plants does that replace? Is this actually going to be taking peaker plants off? So real quick, on the virtual power plant, what is it? Last summer, California's record-breaking Grid straining heat wave forced government officials to say, hey, could you pretty please uh, not charge yet? Not charge yet. Uh, wait until later. Uh, lower your demand for a little bit. And it worked. But nobody got paid for that. The power companies made out fine, but you didn't get paid. But with a virtual power plant, you can get paid. And you can get paid very well. Now, in California, I think you do have to have a solar array. In some places, that is a requirement, but in others, it's not. They can, as Jeff was saying, arbitrage the power, give it to you when it's cheap, buy it back when they need it. So, in California, they're paying two bucks a kilowatt hour. Now, when you buy that power, you're only paying like 11 cents, 12, 14, maybe, 20 ish at peak, who knows? But they'll pay you two bucks to get it back. And people are seeing, there's a story about how they're getting, some customers are getting hundreds of dollars a year, 50 bucks a month, just for allowing the grid to take some power when they need it and put it back. So how many mega packs does it take to replace a peaker plant? Well, it varies depending on the size and the capacity, but just using one example, 142. The big one in California, 142. The 100 megawatt slash 400 megawatt hour energy storage system is 142. Now it's probably 100, 150, depending on the size. 142 of those cabinets, that's huge. Okay, well, let's go back and do the math. 142. So how many does that replace? Four. So if you've got at 10 kilowatt hours, of capacity that you'll, you would allow them to use. Yeah, you would replace four entire peaker plants. And then of course, double it. And then of course, 18. If just 10% of buyers opt in and allow 50 kilowatt hours to be borrowed during peak times, now that's a huge number, but you would replace 18. 18. Well, they're currently making, as we just discussed, 12 and have a ramped full, full capacity of about 22. So how many days does it take to replace one peaker plant? Now, this is where the scale starts getting extreme. 11.8 days already, right now. Every 11.8 days, enough capacity comes online 
to replace a gas peaker plant. And once fully ramped, six and a half days every week. So per year, 30 to 60 peaker plants could go offline or not need to be built in the first place, not need to be replaced. So why would people do this? Why would someone sign up to be part of this inarguably terrible program? Well, because it's not terrible. So at 10, let's say they only give you 10 cents back. If they only gave me 10 cents back, I wouldn't let them use it. That'd be 365 bucks a year. I don't think that's worth it. Except that over 10 years, meh, 20 cents, 50 cents. Now we're getting serious. 1800 a year. It's 150 bucks a month. That's a good chunk of your car payment. But at a buck or two, yeah, now it's getting real. Now, I don't think this $2 figure is going to stay forever. I think that's too generous. And I think people will be allowed to bid on what they will, they're willing to sell their power for. And that'll bring the price down too. 7300 yeah. Yeah, 73000 over 10 years. Seventy-three. The car doesn't cost 73000 Especially if you're like an Uber driver, driving at night when they would never need to take your power. Leave it parked all day. Let them balance it up and down, and away you go. Get seventy-three grand while you're sleeping. Unlikely scenario, but an interesting one. Well, what if you give them 20 kilowatt hours a day instead of 10? And even with just allowing 10, it, it could, they could take the power twice. They could take 10 twice. You know what these numbers are going to look like. Double the ones before. So your 10-year benefit, 146000 146000 for a car you paid fifty grand for. You could take your Turo fleet and just leave it plugged in all the time. And when I say fleet, I mean you could probably get away with four hooked up to your power before you need to start getting some expensive permits and some commercial grade uh, wiring upgrades. But maybe not. Maybe someone can correct me on that. And this is real money. And that's at just 20 kilowatt hours a day. Now, they don't take that much. They don't need to. But if they've got them available, they'll start using them more. If it's a reliable source of power, away we go. 50 kilowatt hours, you can see where this is going, can't you? 36,000 a year you could get. So if you did have a Cybertruck and you did want to give them 50 kilowatt hours a day out of it, at two bucks, that's 36 grand. $365,000. That's exciting. Those are big numbers. That's very serious stuff. And by the way, why don't we go ahead and end our poll real quick. So 53% of you viewers think that mega packs by 2035 will be the biggest source of intermittent demand based power. Gas peaker and not sure and vehicles only 3%. So yeah, the numbers get real exciting. How many peaker plants are there in the US alone? There are 1,000 natural gas oil-fired peaker plants. So that those numbers we were looking at, we're already at the ability to remove 50 a year. And with vehicles, we could remove another 10 or 20, 50 a year. In 20 years, they could replace all of them if they don't ramp beyond these numbers. And again, I think this is a sandbag number. And if it turns out that this is the only number, then maybe uh, they will start building more mega pack factories. One in the Eastern Hemisphere seems like a pretty good guess. Maybe Indonesia, maybe China. Someone I was talking with on Patreon suggested, put it in the dirtiest countries first. Put one in India. Even if you have to sell it for less, it's a whole market that you're not getting to right now. And that would be difficult to get into without a local factory. This could be a good compromise to get the foothold into India. So I do want to thank my Patreons who get early access, bonus content, all kinds of good stuff. Keep the channel running. I really, really can't do it without you. Uh, I think last month, 22% of my revenue came from YouTube. Mmm, that's mm, painful. 
Well, there it is, and there you go. If you want to watch the complete 30-ish minute version, head on over to the second channel, My Tesla Live, where the uh, whole thing goes out each Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific. Yeah, join in the conversation. Thanks as always to everyone else. Like, subscribe, do the usual thing, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the live channel.